Okay, so what is the emulsification tube and what's its function? When we clean carburetors, we generally remove them and clean them and see that some are made of brass and some plastic with all holes in them and we wonder what exactly they do and how they work. Well, this video is gonna show you how, so keep watching. So in order for me to explain what the emulsification tube is for, what I want to emphasize is that when air is drawn through the carburetor on its way into the engine, bringing with it gasoline fuel, it's not actually the gasoline fuel that we know it and see it as a liquid that can be used in the engine for combustion. So instead, it comes out partially separated by air. So the fuel goes through what's called an emulsification process within the main jet even before it comes out into the induction tube. And the way it does this is about how air enters the carburetor. As the suction pressure caused by the engine draws it through the air filter and into the induction tube, it also sends it down a separate channel way connected to the main jet. Looking at the main jet a little closer, we can see that there's a series of penetrating holes in the side. In this main jet from a Briggs & Stratton carburetor, those holes can be seen clearly. And accompanying this main jet is a cover which fits over these holes like this. And now to see how this system works, let's imagine we can see through the cover. And what we'd usually see is a seal up at the top here stopping any pressure going upwards. And what pressure exactly am I referring to? Well it's the air pressure from that specialised pipe we looked at a few minutes ago. And so as the air floods in the cover allows it to flow down the outside of the main jet and in through the holes. And so as the engine runs and it's drawing liquid fuel as we know it up the main jet the air that enters through these holes is at a pressure that allows it to force its way into that liquid fuel thus mixing with it. And it's this mix of air and fuel here that's referred to as the fuel being emulsified. And it's this area of the main jet that's known as the emulsification tube. And even though the general well-known definition of emulsification is the dispersion of one liquid into another, this is still known as emulsification, even though it's not two liquids. It's air and a liquid, so air and fuel. And so after this process has taken place, the emulsified fuel is drawn out of the main jet into the inlet of the carburetor ready for the final part of the fuel processing before it can be used by the engine. And it's vital by the way that the fuel is mixed with air at this point because with four stroke engines that don't have fuel air mixture screws like on small type chainsaws and two stroke engines where we can manually lean up the fuel making a better air to fuel ratio. It's important that the fuel is already lean in order for there to be a decent complete combustion of the fuel in the engine. Not too lean of course, but just lean enough for things to run correctly. And so that's what the emulsification tube is all about. Taking a liquefied form of fuel and emulsifying it, making it less concentrated and more lean by separating those gasoline molecules as we've looked at. And to begin the next part of the fuel separation process, which is atomization. And for that, we need high velocity air. This high velocity air hits the emulsified fuel so hard, this is what's known as atomizing it. It's spread the fuel out even further into small particles between all of that air. Now the fuel is separated enough with enough air between it, looking more like a mist at this point than a fluid, that when it enters the engine, it can combust efficiently. So the fuel now being in this combustible form is thanks to both the emulsification process within the main jet and the atomization process. Okay, so there's far more to carburetors than what I've explained. And of course, I've only explained the emulsion tube side of things here. And at that, I've only covered this very basically, just to give that very basic knowledge. Here are some more videos that might help you further. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.